we are on the record now. So what is this about the scandal with you and the Secretary of the State? Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring up on the record, mm -hmm. seeing as I was almost on jury. You were almost on jury duty. That would have been... I'm serving jury, jury duty from for all of the first quarter of 2023, January 1st to March 31st. And so far, halfway through, the day before my birthday, which by the way, I'm now 28. Fuck you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not 28. Shower me with congratulations, please. Um, on the 8th, my birthday's on the 9th. On the 8th, I had to go in for jury duty and where there were like 60 of us in a room and they whittled, they basically brought up 22 people to be the official jury pool to then be whittled down to 14. And so I had to sit there for like four and a half hours while they asked a bunch of questions of the people that were the 22 selected. And every time one of them couldn't serve or uh, one of the lawyers wanted to eliminate them, they were removed and then someone else was put on. Sat there for four and a half hours, never had my name called. Never once had my name called. I kind of wish they did because I would have been able to get out of it. Yeah, eliminate <laughs> yourself and then go home. Literally, literally. If they had called my name, I they I would have gotten up and the judge said, do you need to approach the, the bench for anything? I would have said, yes, yes, your honor, I do. And then I would have approached and I would have said why I couldn't do it. And then they all would have been like, yeah, no, we don't want a monitor. <laughs> and I would have been able to go home like two and a half hours earlier. But yeah. alas, I did not. No, but again, at least you don't have to go to court every day for a long extended period of time to be a peer of somebody who has possibly committed a crime. Yes. Well, thankfully, the somebody that has committed a crime is an entity as opposed to a person. So I'm, in that case, yes. If I'm being completely honest, they would not like... <laughs> The defendant would not have wanted me on that case at all because <laughs> while I am while I am generally speaking not anti corporation, mm -hmm. I'm anti corporation trust fair, for sure. That's fair, and I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to award a multi million dollar settlement to someone. It was a medical malpractice case. Is yeah. what I knew. They weren't allowed to tell us information, which was frustrating. But you know, it makes sense. Whatever. Sure, you're nosy, but absolutely, you don't need to be in the know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially because it was a healthcare thing. I was more than happy to award it because, you know. Oh, yeah. $60,000 uh, uh, $60, blood draw. I'm I'm being, I'm exaggerating to make a point, but, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, if I if someone got their blood drawn for routine tests and it was $60,000, I would honestly not be that surprised. And that's part of the problem. But we're not, not <laughs> we're not here to talk about the, the medical issues surrounding we're, uh, the American. We're not the legal eagle. System. We're not Hogue Law. We're not Poe's Law is dead. We're not. We're not any of those people. No. We're the Dungeon Bros. Mm -hmm. And I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. We are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. But we have positive D&D &D things to talk. You know, after so long of, of controversy and backlash from both the community and the company that uh, that is creating, you know, our hobby, uh, it is good to hear some positive news. Yeah, we just, we, we don't have anything super major to talk about. But the thing, but everything that we are talking about are positive things, which is great. Love to see it. Absolutely adore it. Um, personal life, on the other hand, huh. shit's happening. <laughs> Not great, but shit's happening. Mm. Uh, public, public though, Phyrexia will be one tap. Effectively, yeah. Came out with a pre-release was a week and a half ago or a little over. Release list for was past past Friday as of recording. Yeah, it's it was it was lovely. I love this set. I'm a big fan of this set. Oh yeah, there's a lot of cool things. I like the core mechanics, toxic and uh, and proliferate. Proliferate um, being too. They can fit into a lot of other already uh, established decks and core mechanics mm -hmm. of of uh, MTG. Yeah. We had some good pulls too. We did. We didn't we didn't get did we get any of the Dominus cards? I don't think we got any. No, no, I, we did not. No, I got two of the Dom I got two of the red Dominus cuz one of them was the pre-release card. Oh, that's right. And then one of them I just pulled. They were the exact same card with the with one of them being One of them had the Yeah. And I got a uh, Elish Norn. Yes, the 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 mm -hmm. Face of the set, yes, if you will. The mommy of machines. The oh, the machine mommy. The machine mommy. Oh, that that that's already been rule forty three on the internet for. Oh, sure. I mean, she's been around for a while. Yeah, but I mean specifically. Oh, you're the mother of machines. Yeah, machine mommy has absolutely been. Oh, probably. Yeah, I'm not looking it up. Thank you. You're welcome. D and D Honor Among Thieves is coming out soon. Yeah. Over a month, <laughs> but, end of March. But t 
today as we are recording it right now during the Super Bowl. I just realized the Super Bowl like pregame is happening. I was right going to say, what time is kickoff? Yeah, like eight thirty, I think. Yeah. So yeah, we'll 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 have this wrapped up by by kickoff. Yeah. But Super Bowl is happening tonight. Um, as Bengals fans, go Eagles. Uh, Chiefs can go. I like the Chiefs too. They're they're honestly got a lot of good. They got a lot of good guys. Travis Kelsey is a UC grad. Hmm. I knew Lovely. that because uh, one of our friends got into fantasy football this year, and she mm-hmm. was a UC alum as well. Yeah, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is an OG. He's he's legit. We love him. But the Super Bowl, best part of the Super Bowl, commercials. The commercials, as we are well aware. And D and D Honor Among Thieves, they have a big game spot, as they say, because you're not allowed to say the Super Bowl. But fuck it, who needs them? It's the Super Bowl. We're also not under any sort of contract. Nope. Uh, it's just a 30 second spot. Mm-hmm. Nothing crazy. Some new trailer bits. Uh, loving the look of this movie. I really am. I think that uh, uh, there's been so many problems with D&D movies in the past. I mean, there was an early 2000s movie that was just absolute garbage. And to see people finally taking a, a care of it and actually making a cool movie. Oh, yeah. I mean... The cast alone is phenomenal. And then every time I see combat in the trailers, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Grand scale, like war level combat looks up to par with like Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Not, I would say like Battle of the Bastards level Game of Thrones or actually probably more accurate is um, spoilers for Game of Thrones, by the way. If you haven't watched that show that's been out for several years. Spoilers. Uh, When spoilers... When the Khaleesi sails over and then begins fighting on um, Westeros with the dragons. And you get the big fight with the Lannister army. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting. The dragon fighting in the Lannister army kind of vibe. Gotcha. For the big combat. You know what I mean. I know. I'm picking up what you're putting down. So, great production value. But highlight highlight of the trailer for, for, for me, 100%, when they're fighting, when the party is fighting a Red Wizard of Thay, and they have like a really cool, like kind of pseudo Avenger shot where it's like a wide shot, and they're all like doing different things, like in sequence against this Red Wizard who's like countering stuff and casting spells and moving shit out of the way, and it's like this kind of sweeping shot. I'm like, ah, oh, looks so good, looks so good. Yeah, available for watch on YouTube if you're not watching the big game right now or. Yes. Pre-game. Yeah, you might have already seen it. As you a, might have, if you're watching, the, if you're listening to this on the YouTube or podcast feeds, podcast feeds throughout the globe: Spotify, Google, Apple, microwave ovens, etc. And so on. Another fun thing: the directors, John Francis, John Francis Daly. My goodness, I cannot speak. And Jonathan Goldstein, co-directing D and D Honor Among Thieves. They've been they've been doing the press circuit for a while now. Mm-hmm. One of the cool things, if you're a fan of martial arts films and Jackie Chan, which you should be. Yes. Action in martial arts films is phenomenal. It's none of this like modern action movie bullshit where you can barely even tell what's going on and the camera is so shaky that it's just a constant oh, yeah. motion blur. It's so fucking annoying. But they took Jackie Chan as inspiration for their fight scenes of wider shots showing full context for action moments that are happening. And when you look at the trailers, having seen that, you can totally, absolutely see where that's coming from there's a shot of one of the female characters that's being held down by a couple of they looked like guards and she reaches up and grabs a bow and then puts the bow string around their heads Mm -hmm. and pulls it back and releases it so that it knocks them in the head and that's all just one shot the entire the entire sequence of her getting slammed down looking seeing it grabbing it wrapping it around them it's like it's a full like multi-second sequence still pretty quick but but that yeah, exactly. When you harken back to Jackie Chan, especially, he's known for using improvised, oh, yeah. improvised weaponry in his fight scenes. And you know, if you want to go back to other martial arts, the uh, martial artists, mm-hmm. um, I'm glad to see that style is coming back a little bit. Because uh, if you go back to Shang Chi, oh Shang Chi, they brought a lot of those the old style martial arts films. Um, that was more Bruce Lee style martial arts, which is also just fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> but. Shang-Chi, great Marvel movie if you haven't seen it. If you're like, who the fuck Shang-Chi? I'm not going to see that. That can't mean anything. It's really good. It's actually genuinely really good. Yeah, and if, if, as long as you have Disney+, Plus, you don't have to go anywhere. You can stay at home. Yeah, and definitely don't need to go to AMC theaters where they're charging different price depending on how good the seat is in the theater now, apparently. Yeah. That's fucked. <laughs> that, is a, that, is a, uh, that is a business that 
is going down and they don't know how to deal with it. You know, I the the era of the theater, the the movie theater, I've heard is is on the decline, which makes sense. So many people, us included, are building their own home theater setups mm-hmm. and I've even seen friends who have full theaters yeah. rooms. Sidebar. Our setup is a large 4K TV and a soundbar. Yeah. I, we're not trying to build a theater. We're not going crazy. No. We're not going crazy. But I mean... We don't have that kind of money. <laughs> we did get the soundbar specifically to watch. To watch movies yes. and have it sound good. It's also I think great... It was Black Widow specifically. Yes, we got it for Black Widow and um, the, when Marvel movies return. We got it for Black Widow and also it's nice to just have a speaker in the living room where our mm-hmm. D&D setup is so we just have music ready to pump in. But uh, I can see a resurgence like in like 20 years, very like uh, whatever the future hipsters are. Oh, yeah. Of like, look, I'm I bought this movie theater. This used to be a movie theater and I've refurbished it. And it's like, shut up with your mustache. It's like the TikToks of kids that like buy a school and then turn it into like their apartment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's like 20 of them that are just living in this old abandoned school. I would 100 percent move into an old abandoned movie theater. That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool. That'd be also horrible. Oh, I mean, we would would live in like three of the rooms and just ignore the rest because it'd be heating would be immensely. We would constantly be freezing cold because they do that on purpose. Oh, yeah. We'd leave one intact as the theater room. (laughs) Just Lord of the Rings on on loop. All three of them. (laughs) Just just twice a day. The entire trilogy. Extended edition. Obviously, we're not plebs here. I wouldn't go that far. That being said, <laughs> this is a D&D podcast. Ostensibly. Ostensibly. This is ostensibly a Dungeons & Dragons podcast. It's been a while. Uh, upcoming releases. We like to do this every so often. We do. They've been doing a lot of new information for Keys from the Golden Vault. They're actually starting to promote it a little bit instead of just like shadow dropping an article because they're like, oh shit, this is coming out soon and everybody hates us, so we need to just put something out quietly. But Keys from the Golden Vault, February 21st. So if you are listening to this podcast, it'll be out before episode 35. Um, we also have Dragonlance in front of us. We would love to talk about Dragonlance. Haven't had a chance to look through Dragonlance. Nope. Haven't had the uh, ambition to, yeah. the drive to recently. Every, everything's just been awful. That being said, what I have looked at from Dragonlance, great. The aesthetic, great. The info, great. People are liking it, from what I can tell. Nobody's really talking about Dragonlance because they all want to talk about the fucking OGL, but... Well, it was a hot topic, hot button topic for a while. Uh, again, Keys from the Golden Vault is a anthology, an adventure anthology, much in the vein of uh, Candlekeep Mysteries mm-hmm. and uh, the Radiant Citadel. Big fan of those books we are. Yes. I don't know why I yoded at that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> ah, big fan of the books we big are. Big fan of those books we are. Um, Keys from the Golden Vault is going to be like heist adventures, which... Love a heist. I've been into the heists. You've been into the heist recently? Been into the heist recently. There's the the Netflix show Kaleidoscope that you can watch all the episodes in whatever order you want. Mm -hmm. And it's like the story of a heist being done uh, through the perspective of this one guy. And it's great show. Love a heist. The, the last you can watch the episodes in any order except one episode has to be at the end and it's the actual heist itself mm. and it kind of ties it together the whole like any order is kind of a gimmick a little bit but sure it's, but it's fun Netflix like randomizes the order for everybody's account which is pretty cool but yes keys from the golden keys from the golden vault February 21st as well as the next MTG set March of the machine is coming out on April 21st so we got a little bit of time to digest Phyrexia all will be one to marinate in it to if marinate. you will I, I, there's some there's some deck to ideas. be completed oh oh got to complete there's some ideas i got for phyrexia we got a set we 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 got a, we opened two pre-release kits each they gave us some set boosters for mm-hmm. each box which was awesome and we have an entire set booster box in the mail yes we'll, we might we'll probably try and do a live stream opening them like we did last time that was just fun to hang out just with you guys. fun to hang out also monday night magic we do that now on tiktok live it yeah. seems pretty much every monday night we're coming out and we're playing a two-player variant of commander called historic brawl it's a wonderful time we got some usuals that always hang out with us mystery sniper we love mystery sniper um mj the, current mj current a lot a lot of regulars that come hang out please come and join us it's always yeah. a fun time that being said Let's begin talking about Dungeons and Dragons. News item number one. As we discussed last episode, the fifth edition SRD is being put under Creative Commons. And thanks to the wonderful 
the wonderful Miss Ginny D on YouTube, as well as the Three Black Halflings podcast and Mastering Dungeons podcast. We've got some interviews from one Kyle Brink. Executive executive, yes. of, executive of D&D. Executive, executive producer. Executive of producer of Dungeons & Dragons. He basically offered a bunch of creators the opportunity to interview him, to ask him any questions the community might have regarding the SRD, Creative Commons, OGL, all that kind of stuff. And we learned some wonderful little tidbits. Quote, The SRD will remain compatible with all the stuff we publish, including the new rule set. This one specifically he told to Ginny D. There will be like an SRD 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, and whatever, each of which will remain in Creative Commons and under the OGL 1.0a. This immediately, arguably much better than the current OGL setup where it is only content found in the core three rule books of the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and the Monster Manual. Yes. Now when you get the of everything rule supplements, your Xanathar's Guide to Everything, your Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, those will be added into updated system reference documents down the line, which will then remain under Creative Commons. So the moment they're updated, they're free reign, mm-hmm. which is great. Now we got to assume that this isn't going to be everything from every book now. This is still going to be limited content they drop. But this mean, might mean we get now the Artificer class in the SRD. Yes, yes, because they're not including that in the... Uh... Yeah, they're not including that in the Player's Handbook. Huh? Correct, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's such a weird thing. Why not? Like, if you're going to update the player's handbook, why not just throw the artificer in there? Just make it a core class. Yeah, that they they did so much to put it into Tosh's and they made that such a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then with the yeah, OGL or not OGL, uh, one D and D, just hey, we're just doing what's in the 2014 handbook, and that, we're not touching anything else. Yeah. And it's like I I get it, but also at the same time, you could make everybody's life easier. Yeah. This comment to Teos Abadia. Abadiah. I don't know how to pronounce last names. From the mast- from Mastering Dungeons. Our commitment is that the SRD will continue to be compatible with the rules updates that are coming. Now, whether that's because we're going to bring rules in, bring wholesale text in from the rules updates, or whether we use some kind of bridging language, that's our promise, is that the SRD will be updated to remain compatible for the new rules update. Brink's comments are a continued reversal of the plan to originally deauthorize the OGL. Yeah, w- w- Wizards fucking lost. <laughs> <laughs> they they've totally been backpedaling hard and Kyle Brink is now the face of damage control at this point. Um Kyle has also previously noted, 1 D&D. They're not trying to completely create a new RPG mm-hmm. system. This is a 5.5. This is 5th edition with rules changes, much like 3.5 was 3rd edition with rules changes. All of this being under Creative Commons and then them updating their system reference document as they go to include new content under the system reference under Creative Commons. Major win. Yeah. Major win for the community. Assuming, assuming, of course, they're not just lying to us. <laughs> that is always a possibility. Um, we had insider leaks to some several larger creators, D&D Shorts, for example, saying that they're hoping that a lot of things will just be swept under the rug and be able to be blown over and go back to whatever nefarious ongoings uh, were happening. Um, but well, them putting it in Creative Commons in the first place is, is their way of trying to be like, we're not going to do that because once it's in Creative Commons, you can't take it out. Nope. Creative Commons is a separate entity entirely and a separate... Very legally binding bindings, as yeah. well. Um you gotta wonder if Kyle Brink is not only just the face, but you got, but maybe there has been some shuffling of power. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple weeks, a couple months, we hear, um, you know, hey, with all of the you know the Wizards comes out with a public statement saying after this event we had some internal reorganization, which just means people get fired, mm-hmm. um, and this is the new structure. I I could see that happening. Yeah. Who is it? Chris Cox? Chris Cox is Chris the, Cox? Is the uh, uh, CEO of Hasbro. Yeah. He was the CEO of Wizards, or the president yeah, of Wizards. He was, he was the president now of Wizards. Now it's Debbie something is the president. Oh, yeah. oh right. Yeah. The We need to monetize D&D like yep. video games, girl. Yep. Yeah, she can go. That's fine. And no, it's not because she's a woman. It's because she's bad at her job. 
Yeah, we talked about uh, I'm just talked about it last episode where a lot of people and episodes before. <laughs> Well, specifically last yeah. episode where a lot of people don't seem to, un- a lot of the higher ups don't seem to be in the space that they're trying to mm-hmm. participate in. Absolutely. And, uh, which like, okay, you can kind of get away with that when you're in certain industries, like mm, the, uh, the logistics industry, as long as you're, you know, you probably don't have to be on the ground, feet on the ground to, uh, understand logistics. Yeah. Not to say it's easy, but like if you're owning a logistics company, you're probably not doing the same thing as trying to run a very public mm. consumer oriented company. Yeah. You don't need to know the details of the packing line and packing onto pallets and wrapping and putting on trucks and all that. You can know that generally, all right, it gets packed, it gets loaded, it gets shipped. Yeah. That's what you need. D and D you need PR and doesn't seem like any of those executives are really good at PR right now. So thankful. I'm very thankful that we have Kyle Brink now, who seems to be a level head of reason, actually communicating with us. Yeah. And the fact that he presumably, I, I would presume that he or someone else at Wizards was like, hey, we need to fucking do this to Hasbro and be like, we're just going to we're going to let your your big voices in the community ask us whatever you need. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you an answer. Or the answer's kind of samey, or some of them kind of avoiding the topic at hand. PR speak. Yes. He was media trained, which is totally normal. It's totally fine. They're obviously not going to tell us everything. They're a company. They're never going to do that. No. And that's fine. But that being said, uh, a lot. Of, pick any of your favorite YouTube creators right now, and the the big ones: Ginny D, um, D and D Shorts. I know Bob the World Builder, several others. Mm-hmm. They a lot of them were in calls with Kyle Brinks and did interviews. They have long videos that you can watch in in their entirety if you want more information. But as of right now, Creative Commons is here to stay. And it's going to be updated as we go with yeah. D&D, which is V great. V great. Before we move on. Hmm? I just now realized there's there's not been a new one D and D drop. There has not been. They've been doing that. They were doing that on the first of the month last year, and then they stopped. Probably probably waiting for. Yeah, probably waiting for this to calm down. I'm 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 itching for another one D and D drop. I want to talk. I want to talk about some some fucking playtest material. Yeah, give it to me. I'm I'm down for it. You know, like that. If they really want to, if they really want to, like encourage the community that hey we're con- we're trying to go back to uh making sure the customer is first like well the- what's the customer want they want more content yeah and especially with the one D play test technically it's content they're they they do not have to pay for yeah at this time and if they can just get another <laughs> class or another small collection of classes and options people can actually start properly play testing it mm-hmm. as opposed to like all right we have a rule set and now we need a bard a ranger a rogue and a cleric and i guess we'll use a 5e fighter or a 5e barbarian or mm-hmm. something else to supplement and make a five person party and we can actually play no give just one more class is all we need and you can actually get a proper five player one D play test game going which i think would be really fun that being said item number two item number two cobalt press details of project black flag plans the alternative rule set created by paizo for Dungeons and Dragons. D and D. D and D. Cobalt Press has provided some additional details about Project Black Flag, its upcoming rule set that will expand upon and serve as an alternative to Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. First announced last month, Cobalt Press has provided additional details about what Project Black Flag will include. As previously noted, Project Black Flag is a rule set fully compatible with 5e rules with, quote, revised and sharpened familiar mechanics while offering new streamlined options, end quote. In a recent blog post... Global Press noted some of the differences between 5e and Project Black Flag. For instance, Project Black Flag will offer players the option to choose a lineage and heritage when building a character to add more customization to their character's background. Additionally, Project Black Black Flag... Oh my gosh, I cannot fucking say this name. (laughs) Project Black Flag will include a new talent system that will feature additional customization options involving martial, magical, or technical skills. Project Black Flag was first announced last month as a potential alternative rule set after all of the OGL nonsense. 
They have lined up several partners, including a number of virtual tabletop services that will support the game and a number of publishers who will publish materials using the rule set. Confirmed virtual tabletops include Roll20, Demiplane, Foundry VTT, and Fantasy Grounds, while Ghost Forge Gaming, Steam Forge Games, Hit Point Press, Frog God Games, and Mage Hand Press have all been announced as publishing partners who will publish materials either compatible with Project Black Flag or made specifically for it with more details in the coming weeks. I feel like we've both spent a little bit of time learning a bit more about Pathfinder in the last few weeks. Uh, you more so than I. Yeah. There's some interesting things of people trying to figure out how to convert D&D 5e characters to the Pathfinder 2e system. And Project Black Flag, go pirates. Love a pirate. I don't think it's going Cobalt to be. press pirating. Yeah. Out on the seven seas, plundering yeah. the shores of Portland, Oregon, where I think, or no, Seattle, Washington, yeah. where Wizards of the Coast is. As it being a derivative of 5e, I am a bit concerned about the sameness of it. Because mm-hmm. if it's too similar, then it's like, why even bother? We can just skin our own 5e if we want. But if it's too different or doesn't all, or it offers like too much customization, then it's going to have the 3.5 problem of not being very accessible. So there's like a fine line I feel like they have to tread here. Yeah. Um, as, as far as like people have been doing exactly what they just said they were going to do, you know, what this press release is all about. You can go on drive through RPG, you can go on the DMs Guild, you can go on Reddit mm. and find people who have done this before. Uh, so I'm more curious as to how many people are going to actually dive in and want to accept this nat- as as their new native system mm-hmm. because it is different, or is it they were going to do this just because it is not D&D? <sighs> yeah, I, I imagine the people that are going to be adopting this are going to be the, um, the open D&D diehards. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to check it out. I mean, if it's mostly 5e and it's got some cool things like Lineage and Heritage, which, by the way, sidebar. One D&D renaming races to species. species. Fucking stupid. Just call it Lineages. <laughs> it feels even... It feels degrading. It does feel more degrading than Lineages, races. Heritages, those sound More better. fantasy. Those sound... Yeah. I, I get Less wanting. Insulting. I get wanting to move away from races as a term to to do. I mean, character races, elves, dwarves, yeah. etc. But species just makes it like animalistic, which I don't. I don't like that either. Yeah. Like just just make it heritage. That's totally fine. But the heritage and uh, lineage options. I'm interested to see what that is. Uh, the D and D backgrounds are going to be updated for one D and D. They're going to have more mechanical use. Are going to be more customizable. They're going to encourage cus- They're going to encourage custom backgrounds as the default. Mm-hmm. Level one feats with the backgrounds as a default, which is great. But I do like having backstory reasons for class features and abilities, mm-hmm. or even proficiencies. Uh, so I'm interested to see what the lineage and heritage. Are. It seems like if logically lineage is going to be your familial history, whereas heritage is more like your culture. Yeah. As whatever character you are from or whatever character group you are from. Um, interested in that. Uh, the talent system, I think, is going to be the real selling point here if they can nail that down. I'm with what I'm worried about now. I'm wor- worried isn't even the correct term, but. With them, the yeah, the talent talent is the the different martial, magical, and skill yeah esque or uh, related things. I'm just curious as how they are going to make that its own thing versus say the D and D feats yes. or even if you want to go just the care the class options. Will they just mm-hmm. be open? In which case, then they're just the feats and they're just changing names. I don't yeah. know. Uh, the. <sighs> I love I love that D and D allows you to do character progression outside of leveling mm-hmm. with the feat system and most people awarding feats and uh, like like boons and that kind of stuff, uh, magic item upgrades. Yeah, that. progression outside of the core leveling system. So 
again, again, that's my biggest problem with this Project Black Flag. As cool as it was and as exciting as it is, and I love their commitment to being like, we're making our own derivative system so that we don't have to ever worry about this again. Yeah. Um, I'm in, I'm in favor of them doing that, and I'm in favor of more systems like this being created. To me... I'm I'm not super interested until they really give us a solid reason to check them out, try them out, and use their system versus just the regular one D and D system that we're going to have. Because one D and D is going to have a lot of great changes. Oh yeah. So we we saw last year we talked about it a lot. Every it seemed like every couple days a new TTRPG quote unquote system. Mm-hmm. Um which was usually just what, you know, the, how oh, I can't even think of it as, it's not the, there's a specific like generalized system that a lot of people use when creating these unique TTRPGs, but it's whatever that system is with a skin on it of Power Rangers or that with a skin on it of Stranger Things or that with a skin, whatever, you know. Um, I'm surprised we haven't heard more from people who are doing those. Yeah. Like the Borderlands uh, TTRPG came out last year. Like, I'm surprised we haven't heard more from whatever company did that. Or the Dark Souls TTRPG yeah. came out last year. This would, they, <clears throat> not to say that uh, that this was a prime time to capitalize on everything, but this yeah. was a prime time to capitalize on everything Absol- for some of those smaller systems. Absolutely. That was the golden opportunity. I mean, that that's what Paizo did by putting all their Pathfinder shit on sale and yeah. they like sold out of Pathfinder books. Oh yeah. I, I do feel like a lot of these licensed properties that create TTRPG systems are, they care about creating it. They care about their initial release and making sure things are fine mm-hmm. and then done moves up, move on to the next project. Uh, specifically the, the, the oh my gosh i'm exhausted <laughs> the games what games the video games oh the TGRPGs. the borderlands and borderlands. Dark, dark souls borderlands and dark souls those specifically dark the dark souls setting awesome mm-hmm. love the aesthetic love like the gritty just hardcore nature of the games and if they could translate that to ttrpgs that's awesome but you have to remember when you're making a product like a Borderlands TTRPG, you need that your your maximum customer base is going to be people who enjoy tabletop RPGs, which is a small subset of the nerd community. And then that circle has to overlap with the Borderlands fans circle. And that's your maximum customer base. Is that overlap between those two circles? But they also had a unique. They had their own unique uh, role play system, or like actual mm-hmm. system with all its own mechanics and Absolutely. whatever company did that. I didn't, you know, I, I could I could go look at whatever company published it because uh, it obviously wasn't Gearbox. Yeah, <laughs> Gearbox not Gearbox isn't taking time to do this, but it's whatever company published that TTRPG. We didn't, you know, I'm surprised we didn't hear from them. Well, or maybe we did, and I and it's just so unrecognizable that who's the, that's that's the thing is who is playing Borderlands TTRPG. Well, I'm saying they had an opportunity to come out and be and make their own. Like, ooh, we're putting oh, it we're on coming, sale, or we're or coming something. out with our own less specific TTRPG. Yeah. yeah. If you want, to, or if you want, to, I that just leads me to believe that a company was commissioned or had a licensing agreement. They developed a system, they developed core rules, and they developed an adventure. Hmm? Publish it, release it, leave it at that. And I don't think that's... I'm all for making new systems, I'm all for making new books, new ways to interact in a tabletop role-playing game environment. But licensed games that are just kind of one-offs, I think they're kind of predatory. If I'm being completely honest, there's clear. It's clear that predatory might not be the right word. Yeah, I was but gonna it's, say the people who who are going to buy it know what they're buying and buying it because yeah, no one's going into it expecting like, like no one's going to buy. <laughs> this is going to be a, a throwback. No one's going to go buy the KFC console, <laughs> the KF console, <laughs> without knowing. Like nobody's sitting there going, man, 
This is going to be so great. No, they're going they're going to buy can, it for a meme. I can I can play video games and keep my chicken warm. What? Win win. I'm all about that, Colonel. Yeah. I mean <laughs> that is weird that they didn't try to advertise it and put it on sale. Like here, thirty percent off this system if you want to dump D D. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, that was that was a that was a sidebar within a sidebar. That's ah, we don't have much too much more to talk about in this in yeah. this episode. Yeah, we get so those those are the big stories. We got wrap up. Three items in the wrap up. As previously mentioned, Keys from the Golden Vaults coming out February twenty first, and we have some new details thanks to a recent press release from Wizards of the Coast. Quote A secret organization called the Golden Vault sends missions briefings to its operatives, the adventurers, in the form of magical golden keys that are inserted into what looks like a mundane music box. Instead of a pretty tune, though, the music box then provides a recording with all the information needed for the adventurers to hunt a particular item of interest. Amanda Hammond, senior designer of the D&D team and co-lead designer of Keys to the Golden Vault. It's the one saying all this. Keys from the Golden Vault linked to metallic dragons, good aligned, and they have the motto, do good, no matter what the cost. The 13 adventures each have two full page maps, one player map and one for the DM. Love that. That's an awesome include. Great inclusion. And the player map, often unreliable or incomplete even. Which is even better for like that proper heist vibe. It's of- right in, it's in genre, it's in, it's great. Oh yeah. Quote, it is up to the adventurers to do the reconnaissance necessary to circumvent any defenses and pull off a legendary heist. Teamwork is paramount because as so often happens in these capers, something will go wrong and creative thinking could save the day. Of all of the anthology books that we've gotten, this one is the one that excites me the most. I love a mystery, but the heist specifically, the it, heist specifically of going to a place and learning it and figuring out a plan and then something going wrong and having to change on your feet is just love it. Oh, yeah. I think compared to a mystery, the idea of a heist is the idea of a heist is it is it is high stakes and you are going to get into mm-hmm. Tro- into shenanigans and trouble where a mystery is like, ooh, this is going to be super cerebral and yeah. we might be able to avoid everything. Um, I, I like that it's focused yes. in its narrative. It's like you have a mission, you have an operation, you have a building to breach and an item to retrieve. Candlekeep Mysteries can be a little bit open-ended, a little bit broad. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Journeys to the Radiant Citadel, you're literally going through portals to different plane dimensions for individual adventures on completely different worlds. So it can be very broad. I like the narrow approach here. It's like you're getting one fucking thing, but it's going to be really cool. Oh, yeah. I'm into it. I'm very excited for this book. February 21st. Should I say check the link below? If you're on the YouTube video. Sure. There might be an Amazon affiliate link there. Maybe. That helps support the show. and We appreciate that. Second item on the wrap up. The Broken Weave Kickstarter offers a radically different take on Dungeons & Dragons. Cubicle 7, a game company, launched a Kickstarter for its new Broken Weave campaign setting, which will use the Dungeons & Dragons 5e rule set, but with several notable departures and changes inspired from the likes of Annihilation, Dark Souls, and the Dark Tower series. The system assumes a world where the weave of magic has broken and the gods are dead forcing the world's survivors to band together for survival in small communities known as havens. While Broken Weave is billed as a campaign setting for D&D, it also includes radically different character-building rules, along with an intriguing new decay system. As magic is broken and the gods are dead, arcane and divine classes are not viable in the Broken Weave. You cannot cast spells without the weave. The weave, of course, being the magical net matrix invisible throughout the Mm -hmm. world that allow you to manipulate things and cast magic in the first place. Instead, the game uses six new classes focused on different community roles, such as the warden, the speaker, the sage, and the maker. Each of these new classes level up as normal, but come with three different archetypes that replace subclasses. Additionally, character players... Oh, gosh, character players. Jesus Christ. What am I saying? What am I saying? What is happening? Additionally... Players build characters using a life path system where different attributes and strengths are defined by a character's life experiences rather than by optimization or focused on a class build. Physically, these life experiences are defined by various trinkets kept by the player on their person, which helps them to battle the decay that permeates the world of Broken Weave. Decay is 
basically exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, it's going to affect different uh, race options differently. Elves, for example, are going to have crystalline growths sprout from their bodies. Dwarves slowly morph into fiery monsters. Uh, when you use magic items, the fact that they are magical runs the risk of accelerating this decay from your character. You are living in a post-apocalyptic world devoid of magic, devoid of deities, and eventually your planet will die. Mm-hmm. And that is that is it. This is The Walking Dead. Things aren't getting better. Nope. This is The Last of Us. Things will not get better. I love the, vi- the vibe of, oh, the weave, gone. Mm-hmm. Magic, gone. I think that's a great concept, a fun concept. It's very different. Um, the Kickstarter is currently live. Uh, if you pledge $29 or more, you will get a PDF version of The Broken Weave. If you want a physical version, you need to back up to $60. And the GM pledge is going to include a deck of broken things and a GM screen for pledges of $102 or more. The PDFs for the core rule books will be released to backers in a few months with physical books coming in quarter four of 2023. They also plan to support the Broken Weave with more books in the future, and you can check out their full Kickstarter on kickstarter.com, the official crowdfunding platform of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Unbeknownst to them. <laughs> Unbeknownst to them and us and anyone with a thinking brain. Yeah. Sorry. Broken Weave. Broken Weave. Super cool. Uh, I'll, this is one of those. And d and I think, has, has given us a, a false sense of security when it comes to people, to having people new jo- people join the game and old people return to the game. Yeah. Um, D&D is very easy to pick up and can kind of be whatever you want. If you're going to play in this uh, this world, this broken, disheveled, mm-hmm. dying world, that's one of those things where you really need to make sure everybody's on the same page. About what it is. About what it is, or else I, I can see um, but, a lot of... A lot of uh, the, if people don't understand what they're coming into, this game mm. could get a bad rap. But this game sounds awesome. Oh yeah, I'm I'm imagine like the character concepts that can come from this, the powerful the powerful mage that now is having to learn how to be a fighter, mm-hmm. the 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 divine cleric that was used to healing from the dead, rising their friends from the dead, the paladin smiting their foes, and now it's like, oh, the paladin is just a guy now. Yeah. And now he needs to learn like advanced fighting techniques because he can't just brute force his way through or the cleric needing to get more nitty gritty and, and maybe assuming a new role in this world with one of the six new classes. It's a fun setting. I think it's a fun concept to apply to like a region mm-hmm. in a, D- a regular D and D world that was like so horrifically scarred that the weave is fucked. Yeah. And maybe not removing magic entirely, but it's like, Anytime you cast a spell, you need to roll a die and you might not be able to Mm -hmm. or and like force characters or like certain class abilities don't always function or something like that. Love the concept. Love the visuals. Uh, If you're going to do this and since it's going to be a coat of paint over 5e, look at the look at some of the alternate rules in the DMG for gritty realism and extended rests madness that kind of stuff and just if i i think if you're gonna do this fucking go all in you know hmm. i think that'd be awesome make sure you're buying though that's my that's gonna be Absolutely. my that's, that'll be the hill i die on yeah Ooh, also over communicate to us there's also like a little sub part of the game with like community building with the havens mm, stuff, yes which is pretty cool where the they haven is kind of a a entity in and of, of itself that the character yeah, like, a, like a hub world a hub world indeed yes they recommend you make a haven before anything else which is pretty cool Last item, we're going to video games because D and D needs to be monetized like video games. It does, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> allegedly, an old school D and D dungeon crawler demo is a massive hit on Steam. One of the most popular Steam games right now isn't even out yet. It's a free demo for a classic style RPG game that's reminiscent of some of the first person Dungeons and Dragons style adventures of the mid '90s. Dark and Darker combines the old school sensibility with the extraction looting of Escape from Tarkov, and the demo is a certified hit on Steam. The free Dark and Darker demo is available as part of the Steam Next Fest, so you can play it right now. 
Developer Iron Mace describes it as, quote, an unforgiving hardcore fantasy FPS dungeon PvPVE adventure. PvPVE, of course, being player versus player versus everything. So fighting other players playing the game as well as NPC mobs. mobs, which does hit on a lot of the key points. In it, you'll head to the depths of an ancient citadel, either alone or as part of a party, searching for priceless treasures to sell to merchants back at the tavern. You won't be the only one searching, however. Other adventurers will be on the hunt, too, and you'll all have to contend with deadly traps and vicious monsters that dwell in the caverns and labyrinthine crypts in the Citadel. Looks like a modern version of the old Ultima Underworld games that looking... The games that inspired things like Deus Ex, Bioshock, Elder Scrolls, and the like. Though, your adventures in this Citadel... They're going to be limited. Eventually, a horrible swarm of darkness expands to fill the entire dungeon, and if you are caught in it, that's it. All the loot you found is gone, presumably left for other over-adventurous parties to discover. Since the Dark and Dark demo launched on Steam, it has been peaking at more than 100,000 concurrent players a day, pulling it up into the top 10 amongst games like Dota 2 and Hogwarts Legacy. Which is fucking unbelievable. For a demo for a demo a demo from a game company that you've never heard of nope uh you can check out some gameplay and trailers online it looks fucking awesome yeah we watched we watched the uh pre-alpha gameplay was that yeah but right before this and man that was just like it, it was very reminiscent it was very reminiscent of all the of a bunch of the uh, modern games that they mentioned bioshock elder scrolls but just sharper a little bit sharper a little bit more modern Modern graphics wise, modern graphics wise, modern not, sensibilities in gameplay yeah. and design, but I mean, not modern as in setting because it's dungeons and it's dungeon themed. Oh yeah, if if you played the Deep Rock Galactic, game mm, yes, Deep that Rock came Galactic. out last year. It was on PlayStation Plus for free. Um, it kind of has some of the vibes of that, just less cartoony, more realistic, mm-hmm. more visceral. You can cast spells, you can shoot arrows, you can you can do sword play. It looks like a lot of fun. And if it comes to PlayStation, <laughs> if, if it ends up coming to PlayStation, I would definitely play the shit out of that. I am tempted in my very limited free time. Maybe download it on Steam and check it out. It's free. It's a demo. Grab it. Try it out. Let us know what you think. Yeah. In the comment section of the YouTube video or anywhere. I don't care. I'm not picky. You could tell us in the Dungeon Bros Discord server, which is free and open to everyone. Link in the link tree in the bio of all the social medias. Do you have anything more to say about Dark and Darker, the game? No, I don't, but I don't. You don't? No. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. That is all we have to discuss today. So we come to the end of the podcast, as we always do. We would take... Questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and ideas from the TikTok Live chat as well as the Discord server if anyone posts in it. Uh, If you join our Discord server, as previously mentioned, we do giveaways, often MTG giveaways. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be better. Trying to do better. Trying to play some games. Trying to do. Trying to play some games. Uh, One of the moderators, DK Alexander, we want to shout him out. He is. He now is going to be employed as a dungeon master. From a local uh, gaming group from where he is, which is like, well done, DK. Proud of you. Well done. Well done. Getting paid to be a dungeon master. What a guy. What a guy. And he mods for us. What a guy. He's 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 an OG. It's a really easy job to mod for us right now. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. We're adding new things. Uh, We're adding some music bots for uh, D and D games. We do have one group that consistently plays D and D on the server. uh, The Bloody Dunces. Shout them out. You can always. Rec- uh, request private text and voice channels for your own D&D parties. There are also public rooms that you can play in uh, if you're doing it for a first time or doing a one-shot or something like that. Uh, there are people trying to get together one-shots, mm. which is always a good time. Always a good time. Love those guys. People. We also like to do uh, giveaways, as previously mentioned. You can also find discount links for our drive through RPG. We have two discount links that are permanently there for members of our Discord server for our previous Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement, as well as our new Dungeon Bros Homebrew Compendium, which is a compilation of all of our free homebrew with a small selection from the Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement that we will update yearly, hopefully. We're not really doing homebrew stuff because uh, OGL scares us right now. 
It was quite terrifying. So we're, we're taking a little break, but... Getting some breathing room. But when we continue to make homebrew, we will be periodically updating the compendium. So you buy it once, and you have it forever. There you go. Both of them, four ninety nine, heavily discounted if you join the Discord server. You can also follow us on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, listen to us on podcast services around, around the, the globe. The globe. Apple, Google, Spotify. Uh, Pandora? Maybe. Sure, maybe. maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it's on Pandora. Um, iHeartRadio? I think we're on iHeartRadio. I don't know on the back end. The, gun- the gurgling of a hungry oh. man's stomach sitting on the subway next to you. Ooh. The subway sandwich that he is eating because his stomach is gurgling on the subway. Mm-hmm. It's in the sandwich. It's in the sandwich. It's in the sandwich. La prova no gusto. The proof is in the sandwich. The proof is in the sandwich. <laughs> we also have an Amazon affiliate store. Links down below. Hopefully we remember to put some there for stuff we've talked about. And uh, it's, it's the best way to support us right now. Uh, right By now. far. Right now. By far. That being said, Sam, what's going on in the TikTok live? Not too much today. Very calm day. Uh... Somebody, Nate underscore 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 Sky said Shia LaBeouf and Jonah Hill, I assume, talking about us. Yes. I mean, aesthetically, I imagine you would be the Shia LaBeouf and I would be the Jonah Hill. Though Jonah Hill's lost a lot of weight, so I'll take that as a compliment. Just do it. Because I've, I've, I've lost over 50 pounds. A little over a year. Yes, praise me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Obsidian Tears asks, do you think the Watsy blunder recently will affect the D&D movie sales? <sighs> when it was when it was fresh, there were a lot of people boycotting it. Mm-hmm. I think that's partly the reason why they chose to delay the movie, though they were also seemed like they were talking about well, delaying they, it. Before. Yeah, they delayed it uh, from the beginning of March to the end of March, I think last October. Which was that right one? before the all the controversies really started to kick up. Yeah, that's when the first wave of are we going to include an OGL at all started. Um, ultimately, no, because I don't think the D&D movie is necessarily marketed for D&D people. It's marketed for a general audience. Yeah, I think that... I think that there are still going to be plenty of people to go see it. And especially mm-hmm. since, again, we as we talked about earlier, it's a high production value movie. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be a, a piece of crap movie. Yeah. I, you can tell by the trailers. You can tell they're they're putting an ad in the fucking Super Bowl. Um, people are going to watch the movie. I am going to watch the movie. We're going to watch the movie and probably do an entire podcast talking about the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, will there be people... That choose not to watch it because they don't want to support Watsy. Absolutely, there will be. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to impact the box office sales. No. no. And I think the movie's going to be pretty good. It looks good. The trailers look awesome. Every time every time they show more footage of it, like CG looks like it's getting polished. Uh, the, the story looks like it's going to be interesting. The action scenes are looking better and better every time I see stuff. I, I'm, I'm expecting this movie to do quite well, all things considered. Yeah. Asmodeus and Lupus asks, have y'all played Journey to Ragnarok? No. No? I feel like that's a question we get kind of often. Journey, I, that has come up a couple of times. Journey to Rag, Journey to, all right, hold on, let's, let's do this. Journey to Ragnarok 5E is what auto-filled. Let's see what's up with that. So North Mythology Adventure and Setting for 5E. Every single event, NPC, or encounter that will cross Adventurer's Path is a result of more than 15 years of love, research, readings, and travels. Our intent is to let adventurers discover and explore the true origins of North mythology that deeply influences fantasy literature, games, comics, and movies. Hmm. Interesting. I love, I lo- I've always been a fan of the Theros setting, which is yeah. very heavily Greek and Roman inspired. And I feel like the Norse, the Norse mythology in general is just fucking cool too. Um, I'm, I've always been more of a Greek Roman mythology guy myself more than a Norse mythology, but, uh, nine world setting based on North mythology, adventure module from level one to 15 new archetypes for all the classes. The rune master is a new playable class, Norse pantheon an in-depth description of deities and semi deities, runic divination system, mythological and magical items, creatures and encounters from the nine worlds, adventure maps. Yeah. Fuck it. It looks cool. Yeah. Sounds cool. Haven't played it. All right. Free down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Don't tell me to. Adventure and setting. Forty nine ninety nine. Forty nine ninety. Physical. You can get the PDF for twenty bucks. Which I think is pretty cool. Seems like they got some supplements as well. 
Love it. Love it. Love it. It's getting supported. Free downloads. What's in the free downloads? Character sheet, printer-friendly character sheet, mead recipe. Hmm. I'll, we'll be looking into this later. We'll be looking into that mead recipe later, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I've eaten all the component parts of mead, so hypothetically, yes. <laughs> okay, Brian Brushwood. <laughs> I've consumed the component parts of mead. <laughs> that's, that's a... Oh, boy. <laughs> that's a cut. If you get that reference, love you. Uh Anyway, no, we have not played it, but you might have inspired us. People keep people keep bringing it up. It is not this is not the first time Journey to Ragnarok has been presented to us. So, what else we got? That's it. That's it. That's it. Chill day. Chill day here at Dungeon Bros HQ, aka our apartment. Our apartment. The cat is on the floor sleeping. You can't see her. Yeah. Totes adorbs. Totes. Totes adorbs. Adorbs. Again, we we go live for the podcast. Uh, things have been, things have been hectic in the personal life, so we did not schedule this very well. It's also partly why this episode is a little bit shorter. We're gonna clock in a little bit under an hour. It's, it's, not, it's totally fine. Perfectly, totally fine. fine. I don't. We don't. We want to respect your time here on the Dungeon Bros podcast. Oh, you're welcome for answering your question, Asmodeus and Lupus. You're welcome. Also, thank you for continuing to watch us live, and thank you for asking it. Yes. People, people, people tend to ask us questions and then realize that we're not answering questions as people are asking questions and then bounce. So we don't usually get the interaction. No. But it's nice. You can watch us live on the TikTok. That's where most people follow us. Over 31,000 people follow us on TikTok. And every time we do one of these Magic the Gathering streams, it seems like we grow in a big chunk. People like the Magic the Gathering streams. They're cool. They vary in, in watcher viewership, if you will. But we love, we love, we love it. We're going to continue to do it. We get to chat with you, lovely people in the audience. Absolutely, we need to do. We need to do that with Discord server specifically. We, we're we're gonna we're gonna try. We keep saying this every fucking week. Do some do some MTG games. Maybe do a little bit of D and D. Try to put on some events for the Discord. Make it more of a make it more of a thing. A community. We updated the leveling system with some new roles that are specific. We're gonna do some new music bots. Reformatted some stuff. Got rid of a lot of clutter. It's pretty. It's much more streamlined now. Go check us out. Drive through RPG got a bunch of free homebrew as well as some paid supplements so you can get uh, all of its most all of its pay what you want. Twitter, Instagram, the YouTube's podcast services, round the globe, microwave ovens, round the globe, round the globe, round the globe. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We love you very much, and in the meantime. <laughs>